hello friends welcome to my channel my name is wolo i want to say thank you to everyone who have subscribed to my channel as usual i love sharing information this video i'm supposed to do it outside so that you can see the beautiful scenery but unfortunately the wind is actually disrupting a lot of things and the ones i've recorded when i play them back the wind just you know keeps interrupting i and I can't hear myself or all the things I have said. So I decided instead of just wasting the video, let me do the video inside the car. Um, at least I will still pass the message or pass the information I like to share. And um, that will be beneficial to anybody that sees this um, video. So today I'll be talking about the um, types of employment in Canada and the recruitment cycle um, in Canada recruitment cycle or types the types of employment is almost the same thing anywhere in the world but there are slight differences that you get to observe um, especially for um for those of us who are coming from nigeria or any other part of the world you observe some slight differences just slight differences is not much so um you have the full-time employment and under that full-time employment it, ca it can be either a fit a it can be a fixed term or a permanent employment a permanent employment will tell you on the job description or on the job advert you will see it there stated permanent employment but if it's a term employment term employment means um, more like a contract they'll tell you okay you will be needed for a specific period of time some can be six months some can be one year and then um, in some job adverts they will indicate if the position you are going to occupy is um, is based on someone going on maternity leave so like I mentioned in one of my videos maternity leave in Canada is for one year so when people are going for maternity leave, maternity leave for one year they will need somebody to cover up for that position so if you look at the job advert you would see some of them will state um, full-time full, um, full fixed term position or permanent position so you watch out for those things when you are trying to apply for a job then secondly there are part-time employment um, part-time employment is usually, usually the number of hours you work is not the full hours 40 hours in a week part-time employment can range from 20 hours in a week to 25 hours in a week so that's for part-time employment then for casual employment casual employment means uh, you are at the beck and call of the employer you just make yourself available they will just call you anytime they will call you to ask you are you available to come and pick up a shift if you're available then you can go and um, do the work and then you get paid for it so that's casual employment and there are lots of casual employment available then um, another one is apprenticeship and training so for people who are in the trades people who um, are plumbers welders who want to learn plumbing welding all these other blue blue collar jobs you know skills trade jobs um, apprentices they work under an organization and they get paid as well as an apprentice so for apprenticeship and um, or trainee they have just you just have an agreement with the organization you work with on how much you get paid so that's for apprenticeship and trainee then Another type of recruitment, sorry, another type of employment is um, uh, employment through a recruitment agency or an employment agency. And an employment agency, they are the ones that really go around employers to fill in um, temporary absences. Let's say a company has somebody who maybe has one month uh, sick leave. And they need another person to occupy that person's position for just one month so all these recruitment agencies or employment agencies they are the ones that fill in those um fill in for the person when they bring in staff to fill in for the person who is going who is going to take a one month sick leave so that's what employment agencies do but some of them you can get jobs that can last for like six months one year even a permanent job from all these employment agencies the only difference is they get to pay you your salary so the company you work for if the employment agency employs you and places you in another company in company b 
company b will not pay you instead the employment agency is the one that is going to um, be paying you then um you have another type of employment which is the subcontractor contractor employment that one you just sign a contract agreement with a company to provide services i think i see that with most it people who uh, sign contracts with companies and then they provide um services for a period of time um and then when the project is over maybe under a project and when the project is over the contract is over and everybody goes so that's uh, that's those are the types of employment in canada so i'll be moving on to um the recruitment cycle and this is going to be beneficial for people who plan to land in canada and people who are already in canada so the recruitment cycle starts with the first phase which is your application when you send in your application and um your application goes you send in your application you have two things you will be expecting two things one is either a negative feedback or second the second one is a positive feedback a negative feedback you get an email from the company saying we are sorry your um your application uh does not match what we need uh blah 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 the usual you know they have this generic message they send to people they don't want so that one cancels you out but if your application is successful um then you will be called for a phone screening interview before i proceed to that i want to give a tip here so for new immigrants somebody who is coming as a new immigrant it's advisable that you create a folder of all the applications you send and for each application you send you should save the job description and the name of the company and the resume you used in sending that application so for each application you have to target your resume to that um, application you don't just send a general resume a lot of mistakes people make is sending a general resume because you see a lot of job, job adverts you are so much in a hurry to send a general resume and most times you get rejections if you send a general resume so you have to target your resume to the specifics of the job description so if you send your targeted resume is advisable that you create a separate folder and save everything relating to that particular job just in case you get a feedback saying that you have succeeded and you'll be going through the next phase that's one or number two is you when targeting your resume you should also take um note of something called applicant tracking system the applicant tracking system is what most companies use and you have to target your resume in such a way that the words you use in your resume will be recognized by the applicant tra tracking system the ats and your resume will be picked so you have to use keywords so that your resume is picked by the app the ats machine It's a software ats is actually a software used by most most organizations to weed out um unwanted resumes and and select resumes that they want to look at before the recruiting person takes a look at the resume one by one to see if they can proceed with calling you or not so in most cases it is important to target your resume using keywords um used on the job description so that you your resume can be picked by the ats machine the software i'm calling the machine sorry is ats software so that's it that's a tip there then if you're successful and your resume is picked and then you um you get a positive re response that they would like to schedule a phone screening interview which is the next phase it's important it's a tip i'm giving here it's important that you um check your job check the resume you sent that's why i said at the beginning every application you send create a folder for it every application if you send application to company a to company create a folder for company a if you send application to company b create a folder for company b and ensure that you're putting in the job description you're putting in the advert itself and you're putting in your resume in that particular folder so when you're successful and they call you and they schedule an appointment for a phone screening interview you'll be able to go back to that folder and retrieve the information you used in sending your application and then um during the phone interview you get to the the person that will be speaking to you will be testing you for so many things they'll be checking you 
for your communication skills your soft skills your hard skills they'll be checking what time you are when you are likely to resume they'll be checking or they'll be not checking they'll be asking for why you want the job they'll also be asking for uh, your salary what you currently earn or what you intend to earn if they hire you they will also be asking if you know anything about the role you have applied for so it's it's very important that you um to speak very well and you communicate slowly so that they can hear you because it's a phone interview and it's very it's highly important that you speak slowly so that they can hear you it's also important that you do a research about the company and the role and how much they pay for that role it's easy for you to communicate clearly it's also easy for you to communicate your soft skills and your hard skills and talk about the role so during the phone interview it's there are two things that can mar the um, phone screening interview and that one number one is your communication skills your ability to communicate clearly to the person who wants to schedule you for the next phase of the recruitment process which is the interview so it's it's important that you convince that person clearly and communicate clearly because that's the person that will determine if you will go to the next phase or not and then secondly another thing that um, actually make people not proceed to the next phase after the phone screening interview is the aspect of the earnings so it's important you do your research about how much the company is going to pay for that role and you can search for those things you can do background search for any company in canada using glassdoor or pay skill so i'll be leaving the link of glassdoor and pay skill on the description box of this video so if you are invited for any interviews it's important you you do a research a background research about the company and how much they pay for that role for some for some roles you can see the amount for some roles you might notice but it's important you research about how much they'll pay for the role so that you'll be able to um state during your phone screening interview what you expect in terms of salary or you could avoid that aspect of it and say you are not particularly uh interested in mentioning how much you want to earn because you know that the company already have a budget for that role but you would like to show your performance first and um, that's another option it's some people will say the option is not good but i feel that you can you can put that option there so that you don't negotiate at this phone screening stage it is better to negotiate at the um, panel interview stage or is it's better to talk about what you intend to be paid at the panel interview stage so if you are successful at this stage you will now be scheduled for the next phase which is the panel interview and the panel interview phase is a phase where you have to demonstrate what you know about the job you have to talk about also repeat about talk about your you also have to talk about your soft skills your hard skills talk about your achievements your accomplishments um you know it's important that you have a list of all accomplishments that you've done so if you let's say for instance if you are a salesperson you can say i sold um one million or i brought so much profits to the company blah 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 using percentage you know you can just add that as an accomplishment relating it to um the kind of job that you are looking for or the kind of job they are interviewing you for so that's that's for the um, interview phase and then another aspect of the interview phase is um a written test so many companies i know they usually give written tests um after the panel interview they want to test your written communication skills they want to test your knowledge and most of these tests are scenario based so they can give an example to say like um tell us about a time or write tell us about a time where you um worked with worked with a difficult manager what did you do you know at this point you are you have to bring in your experience to play so this is where a lot of people um who do not know what it entails make mistakes and sometimes they can also put you on a computer and you know test you so if for instance i'll go back to the job advert if the job advert says 
um, we are looking for an accountant or a logistics person who has um, knowledge of SAP, using SAP software. Or they are looking for a HR person who has knowledge of using the HROIS system. Or we are looking for a HR person who has the knowledge of using PeopleSoft. You know, all these softwares. And you claim to say that you have knowledge of using these softwares. They will, during the panel interview phase or during the interview phase, they will give you a computer, they will give you a question, and um, they will give you questions and then give you scenario based situations where, like, you are working to test your ability of using those soft skills. A, a simpler example is Microsoft Office. If you claim to know Microsoft Office very well, if you say you're an expert in Excel sheets, you're an expert in Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Word, you know how to write letters and stuff like that. They'll, they'll give you a computer and test your knowledge of writing letters. They'll test your knowledge of Excel. They'll test your knowledge of PowerPoint. They'll test your knowledge of all these things. If you say you're an accountant, they'll test your knowledge of bookkeeping. You know, they'll test your knowledge of all these things. So this is where a lot of people fail. So it's not just saying, um, I am good at this, I am good at that. And then when they give you the practical aspect of showing um, your skills, you you will not be able to um show your skills so at this point if you are good if you are very good and you know yourself and you are successful you will move on to the next phase but if you're not successful that's when you receive a letter to say oh we are sorry um blah 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 we had more better candidates can candidates than you so you don't want to experience that so i urge anybody look at the job desk job adverts before you send in your application don't just go and put that you are a, um, you have knowledge of this and this software. And at the end of the day, when they start testing you, you fail in that aspect. So that's, that's, um, that's the third phase. Then the fourth phase of the recruitment cycle is the references. So after you must have gone through the first phase, which is applying, the second phase is going through the phone interview, the phone screening interview. The third phase is um, the panel interview and a test of your skills using scenario-based situations. And then the fourth phase is the reference. There are situations, this reference is also critical in the sense that um, a lot of people lose out on job, good job opportunities because they don't have good references and they don't have good people that can, you know, um, communicate their skills to whoever they speak with during the reference interview references is very important having a reference a good reference is very important um because the the challenge a lot of immigrants face is that a new immigrants especially we put up we put references that are not based in canada and most recruiters or most human resources persons in canada find it difficult calling outside of canada to verify your claim and verify your experiences so it is important i'll give this as a tip for any new immigrant that has landed it's important you look for at least three or four persons that you can talk to who know you very well that can communicate very well um, to whoever they whoever will call to verify your experiences if those people can communicate very well, then you are good to go. I've had this experience before where I passed through. In fact, that particular experience was very painful to me because it was a stressful recruitment experience. It was very stressful recruitment experience. I, I passed through so many phases, like almost seven phases of the recruitment cycle. Uh, I'm just summarizing the normal uh, recruitment cycle, but for some jobs, you have to pass through like six or seven recruitment phases and I'd gone to the final stage only for them to tell me that my reference that I put and this one is not even reference from outside Canada a reference within Canada um, the reference that I had put on my forms when they spoke to them the references could not communicate my skills to them that would convince them that I could do the job. And that was how I lost out. You can imagine after going through six cycle of six different phases from writing tests, the first phase to doing a tour, the second phase to doing a screening interview, panel interview, another scenario based test. And then the reference, they now told me that my reference, the references they called, three references that they called, 
within Canada here could not communicate my skills to them in such a way that um, was convincing to them that I could do the job and that was how I lost out on that opportunity. So references is very important. You don't want a situation where you get through all these phases, you know, from having your resume picked in and then somebody looks at it and calls you, you pass through the phone screening interview, pass through the panel interview, pass the other ones and then you get a reference and somebody, somebody just says rubbish on your behalf and at the end of the day you don't get the job. So it's important your reference is very important most companies in canada do not like calling references outside of canada the ones that do call outside of canada are mainly um recruitment agencies those are the ones that do the background work and do all the work but most organizations within canada they don't like calling references outside of canada so it's important you get references good references not just references good references that can communicate very well know how to communicate very well convincingly so that you can get the job um i think that's all i want to say um let me see if i still have some points then another thing i i, I think i omitted here some things can actually cost you not having the job you apply you think you're very qualified for the job and uh, the recruiter just goes to look at your linkedin profile and sees that what you have put on your LinkedIn profile is not consistent with the application you have sent in. Based on that, they will just disqualify you and they will not, you know, proceed further with your application. So it's important that whatever you're doing, you should be consistent. If you're applying for a job as a human resources person, your LinkedIn profile should be also um, consistent with what you have put in. So you cannot claim to be a human resources person on LinkedIn and then you're looking for a job in business analysis. Those are two unrelated fields. I know a lot of people like to try to package their resume in such a way that they have such experiences. But in Canada, they are so, the human resources in Canada, I know they are so experienced that they, can, they are able to detect people who are packaging their resume when they don't have those experiences. And that's why they put all this, you know, all this, I would like to say blockade. I won't say blockade because it's a recruitment phase. They, they put all these stages in place to eliminate people that they know are not experienced in such fields and most new immigrants do not know how to, all these things work and they don't know how to target their resume not know how to communicate during the phone screening phase they do not know how to you know um communicate during the panel interview and these are the challenges most new immigrants face and at the end of the day they end up doing menial jobs and doing jobs that are not really um in line with their profession and in line with their career and they get stuck so this is the information i want to share for anybody who is out there and who plans to come to canada you need to start polishing yourself because the most important thing is getting the job and not just getting the job getting a very good job that is in line and inconsistent with your career dreams thank you so much for watching and have a good day bye bye